Hey everyone, my name is Puma and I'm a teacher naturalist here at Westminster Woods. Today we're going to be going on an exploration around the woods and we're going to be looking at a few different restoration projects we've done over the past few years. Um, but I was supposed to have someone actually with me to do this video, so hang on a second. Nautilus? Nautilus? Dutch Bell Creek is part of a larger watershed called the Russian River Watershed. There used to be a lot of salmon in this area. There were so many that they were actually caught and put into cans in a cannery. Unfortunately though, since the 1800s, salmon populations have been steadily declining. From 1975 to 1991, there was an 85% decrease in the number of salmon going to the ocean. The main reason the number of salmon went down is because their habitat was being degraded by humans. So this was done in several different ways. A lot of the forests around here were turned into cities and turned into farmland as human populations in this area expanded. And also something called deforestation happened. Deforestation is when a lot of trees are cut down in one area at once. You can see right over here, we have a large redwood stump that was once cut down when Westminster Woods was logged. So it was logged back in the 1800s, in 1870, the North Pacific Coast Railroad actually went right through the center of camp here. It went down our road that we have today called Tunnel Road, and it would carry out lumber and passengers who wanted to see the redwoods. Back in the 1990s, the Dutch Bell Creek was na named a critically impaired creek in our watershed. Westminster Woods actually used to place a dam right here underneath this bridge to back up the water and create a swimming hole for during the summer, which was nice because people got to go swim in the creek, but it wasn't the best for what the salmon needed. So one of the first parts of restor restoring the creek was removing this dam here and a couple upstream at our neighbor Alliance Redwoods and even the community of Camp Meeker. Getting rid of those dams helped restart the flow of water because dams block the flow of water, which is hard for salmon to get upstream where they need to go. The dams also change the shape of how the stream and rivers flow, makes the water go slower, which increases the temperature, which is better for salmon predators and not the salmon themselves. Because salmon like the cool temperature because it has more oxygen in it, and it's nicer for them to survive. And removing these dams was one of the first steps to restore the salmon habitat in the, the greater Dutchville Creek. Another early restoration project was improving dirt and gravel roads to help prevent erosion. So when water hits gravel roads, it will take little bits of dirt and gravel and carry it downhill into the creek. When the sediment gets into the creek, it can really harm salmon's habitat. It clogs up the clean gravel that salmon needs to survive, and it can suffocate the eggs and alvin that live in that gravel. It also blocks off the sun, so other aquatic life that needs sunlight to survive can't survive. It covers up the ground, so salmon can't get to all of their food sources, and it gets inside of their gills. Our old logging roads that we have here are a major source of erosion, so we've actually taken some of these roads and improved the slope of them to help prevent some of this erosion. A lot of our gravel roads used to have in slopes, so the slopes would slope kind of in and towards the uphill side of the roads, and that would carry a lot of sediment down to the creek. So now we've changed them so they have out slopes and the water will come down and kind of deposit along the road in different places before it reaches the creek. Roads can be a major source of erosion for a stream, but so can trails, especially when people walk where they're not supposed to it. 
especially like right here where all the vegetation is. So here at Westminster Woods, students have helped align the trails of, around camp with stones or sticks to help show where people should and shouldn't walk on property. Um, and they've also helped build these check dams out of sticks and duff, which helps slow down the water and trap the sediment so it doesn't enter our stream. From 1991 to 2001, scientists looked for coho salmon in the Russian River watershed. Out of the 39 creeks that previously had coho in them, they only found two creeks where coho were still living. In Dutchbill Creek right here, we thought coho were completely extinct. But in 2001, a naturalist and their trail group were walking right along this trail right here, and they actually spotted some spawning salmon. Luckily, they were able to videotape it, and this video evidence led to a lot more restoration projects. The Russian River Coho Salmon Captive Broodstock Program was started back in 2001 when scientists went out to our Dutch Bill Creek and the Green Valley Creek and captured about half of the coho salmon population there and bred them in the hatchery with the goal of helping to build a self-sustaining population of coho salmon within the Russian River watershed. Just three years after the scientists have found, found the coho salmon in our Dutch Bill Creek, there were no more returning salmon in, after those years. Back in 2004, it was the first time hatchery raised coho salmon were released. And in 2006, it was the first time the hatchery released fish were returned back here to the Dutch Bill Creek. The Captive Broodstock Program is a team of people and organizations that have partnered up to help restore the coho salmon. The salmon are raised and, and bred at the Warm Springs Fish Hatchery on Lake Sonoma. And here at Westminster Woods, we partner with all of these organizations by allowing them to come onto our property and release those bred coho salmon right into our creek. Every spring, they put about 2,000 fish into this tank at a time where we pump creek water into it and the smolts acclimate to the creek water for about two weeks, hopefully allowing them to return here as adults. And then students and staff get to release them back into the stream where they will head down to the ocean. As part of the efforts to bring back co salmon, there's a lot of monitoring and data collection that goes on. California Sea Grant, which is a collaboration of the Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the state of California and universities across the state does a lot of this monitoring. They send scientists out who walk along the creek and look for spawning salmon. They also snorkel and look for fry. They also capture and release smolts to count them right before they go off to the ocean. And they even do something called electrofishing. Electrofishing is where you temporarily shock all of the fish in a pool to count them and monitor them at once. They also use antennas like the one right behind me to track fish. So if you look in the creek, you can see these black lines going back and forth. Before fish leave the Warm Springs Fish Hatchery, they are implanted with a PIT tag. PIT stands for Passive Integrated Transponder. And each PIT tag has its own individual number that corresponds to a specific fish. So when the fish goes over this antenna, it tracks them and we're able to tell which fish are going to and from the ocean. One of the challenges that coho face during the summer is a low stream flow because it's no longer raining during the summer. So that low stream flow leads to lower oxygen contents in the water, higher water stream temperatures, lower creek bed. So with some points in the creek, it even dries up completely, which leads to disconnected pools so like salmon can't get from one part of the creek to the other. Here at Westminster Woods, we actually used to pull our water out of the creek to water our fields. But back in 2015, we actually gave up that right. And we teamed up with the Russian River Coho Water Resources Partnership and some other organizations to help build these giant green tanks. During the winter, we actually use our own spring water to fill up these tanks so that during the summer, we can use them to use it for our irrigation um, throughout the whole summer. These two tanks behind me hold up to 175,000 gallons of water, which is an estimated enough water to last anywhere between four to five months throughout the whole summer. The woods also got a new irrigation system and we shrunk the size of our big green field to help meet the needs of this new water system. And this project leaves more water in the creek during the summer when the salmon need it most.
People used to think that taking out large logs like the one behind me and other debris from the creek was really good for the habitat. But it turns out that having these types of logs inside of the creek is actually really important for salmon survival. It's so important that a lot of organizations have actually come together to put logs and boulders and root wads back into the creek. These structures are called in-stream structures. This work has been done by Gold Ridge RCD, partnered with Dragonfly Stream Enhancement and Streamline Engineering. These structures help out salmon in multiple different ways. They provide protection from them. They can hide from predators inside of the logs, inside of the different little nooks and crannies. Also, when it rains and the creek gets higher, they can hide inside of them so they don't get swept away by the stream. And when it rains, the water will get higher and then flow over these structures. As it flows over the structures, it actually digs out the creek on the other side and it creates a little pool. These pools are really important for salmon in the summer when the rest of the creek dries up. They need a place that still has water in it where they can live and wait out the dry season. And some of these structures are also made so that it helps clean some of the gravel and salmon have a nice place to lay their eggs. After walking around all of camp showing you guys all of the restoration projects that we have done here to help the coho salmon, it's nice to just take a moment and sit down and rest underneath the shade. Now, salmon also need shade as well because the shade helps cool the stream and of course the cooler water holds more oxygen which is really nice for the salmon and which is why all of these shrubs and trees have been planted down by the creek. Leaves that fall into the creek end up as food for the invertebrates and stuff that the salmon need to feed on so that they can survive. Any of the trees or branches that actually fall into the stream end up being habitat, kind of like those in-stream structures that we looked at a little bit earlier. The plants that grow near the stream's bank help actually filter any pollution that is coming off the hills or off the road and it helps filter the pollution before it enters the stream itself and then the the roots of the plants on the banks help hold it in and prevent the soil from being eroded Whew. that was a lot of information thanks for sticking through it with us one cool thing is as you learn more things about something you tend to appreciate it a lot more and hopefully we learned a little bit more about the salmon and get to appreciate their greater role here at Westminster Woods and that with them, our forest is healthy and everything else is healthy as well. Yeah, from the other animals to the soil to the trees and even to us, we all benefit from a healthy fish population. We're all stewards of the planet and it's our responsibility to take care of the planet around us. So before we go, I have a question for you. And that is, what are you willing to do in your ecosystem at home to help your ecosystem survive? Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.